Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan. And in today's video, we'll take a look at Storm's granular simulation tool and how we can export these simulations to Blender for rendering. Oh, and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get started. In this video, I won't spend much time talking about every detail of granular simulations because it's quite well documented in Storm's docs. I rather want to focus on the export process to Blender because it's not that straightforward as I would like it to be. So let's get started. If you don't know what Storm is, I explained it in my previous two videos. They are both linked in the info card. But for this video, we'll just start off by adding in an object and choosing granular system. This is the base system for granular simulations and allows us to now add a source which by pressing W we can move up on the y-axis and now when pressing space we can already see that grains are being emitted. Great, we now have a basic granular simulation. Of course you can add in colliders and much more, but I showed you how to do this in my previous liquid video on Storm. And the process stays the same for fire liquid and granular simulations. But just very quick, let's add in a simple cube collider and you can specify the mesh with the file path setting and we can move it up and maybe a little to the side and now you can see that if I play it the grains are colliding with the box. To make the simulation a little bit more interesting we can also animate the source so let's move it to the side and then alt click on the translate x option move a few frames forward and move the source and now alt click again and just like this, we have animated our source. With this basic granular simulation set up, we now want to export it to Blender so we can render it. Sadly, Storm only allows us to export these particles in an alembic file. The problem behind this is that these alembic files cannot be imported to Blender. So what we need to do is copy an object to every single point and export this mesh sequence as an OBJ sequence which we can then import into Blender. The easiest way to do this is to replace every particle in Storm with a single vertex. So let's go ahead and add in a plane and then delete three out of these four vertices. And we can now move this vertex back to the center and snap it to the grid with control. Great. With the vertex selected, let's go to File, Export and then choose OBJ. We want to choose selection only, so we only export this object. And now let's give it a fitting name, for example vert.obj. Let's click on export and let's switch back to storm. To copy this vertex to the particle points, we need to use the procedurals window. Let's press R for a read node and let's change the file path. We want to paste in the file path for our vert.obj object. And just like this you can see that the object disappeared because a single vertice cannot be correctly displayed. So it switches to a little sphere. But this is great, we now know that it works. Let's search for a node which we can use to copy this vertex to the points of our particle system. And the node we are searching for is called copy. So with tab just search for it. And you can see that it takes points as an input. So with tab let's search for import system and hook it up. We can now double click on this granular particle system to copy the name and then with the node selected copy it in here. And once we make our copy node visible we should see that the vertex is being copied to the points. Great! Before we now export this to Blender I want to show you one more thing and this is how we can upres the simulation. If we want a higher resolution we can always go into the particle system settings and change the resolution but this will take much longer to simulate. So what we can do is use the upres and upres solver nodes. Let's add both of these and then hook the input system up to the upres solver as well as the upres node. Weirdly, Storm just crashed when I did this, so we'll continue with the simulation without animation or colliders. But I think even this will illustrate the point of the upres solver. So let's disable the copy node and disconnect the input system node and let's now add in the upres node as well as the upres solver node 
And let's connect all of these nodes together like this. If I now preview the Upres solver, you can see that not a lot has changed. This is because we are still seeing the granular particle system. So let's select it and let's right click on visibility and change it to false. And if we now play it, you can see that we get the first frame of our granular simulation up rest. To up rest every frame, we just need to double click on this init frame value and type in frame. And now it works quite well. Of course, we can up rest it with different parameters, but this is all up to you. I now want to input this up rest simulation back into our input points for the copy node. To do this, we will need a and dynamic node because this is a dynamic output and we need a non-dynamic one. And now you can see that all of the points are being copied to the correct particles. Great, now we can export this to Blender. With the copy node selected, let's search for write and because I have already saved this file, the file path works correctly. We only need to change the .abc file ending to .obj because with the obj stop motion add-on we can import obj sequences into Blender. And with all of this set up, let's click on sim. And you can see that in the project folder, a caches folder has been created and we have our obj sequence right here. In Blender, let's create a new scene and with the stop motion obj add-on installed, which by the way is linked in the video description below, we can go to File, Import, Mesh Sequence, navigate to the Mesh Sequence folder and type in Write as our file name. We'll need to do this because every file starts with Write. Now we can just click on Select Folder and the sequence will be imported. And there we have it. Our sequence can now be played and everything works quite well. But of course we cannot render it because these are all just single vertices. We don't have actual geometry. So, to fix this, we need to instance an instancing object to these vertices. To do this, let's add an, an icosphere and down here change the subdivisions to 1. Now we can shift select our mesh sequence and with Ctrl and P parent the icosphere to our mesh sequence. And now with the mesh sequence selected, let's go to instancing and choose vertices. We can already disable viewport and render and in the outliner select the icosphere. By scaling it down, we can make it look a lot better. And just like this, all of our particles have renderable geometry. You might notice that the instanced icosphere still appears at the bottom right here. This won't be visible in renders. And now with this setup, we can just add in a camera, light and shade this scene to our liking and render it out for results like this. And yeah, this is basically it. This is how we can import a granular simulation from Storm to Blender. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. And we'll see each other in the next video next Saturday.